reads effortlessly and confidently. Now that's the affective side. Effortlessly and confidently. Not with hesitation. It's that ease of the dancer. Ease and grace. Effortlessly, confidently. At a level of understanding and a rate appropriate. Now let me stop here. A level of understanding. It doesn't say at 100% understanding. It says at a level of understanding and a rate, a reading rate, or speed, I hate to use the word speed because that often means fast, so I like to use rate, appropriate for the task and the material. That is, a fluent reader adjusts how many, in English, let's say, a fluent reader adjusts how many words she reads per minute, we often talk about WPM, words per minute, how many words per minute that she reads, and her level of understanding, 80%, 50%, 100%, according to the task and the material. A fluent reader does not read everything at the same rate for the same level of understanding. Often, generally, usually, our students in the EFL context, the ESL context, read everything word for word for 100% understanding. They're not fluent readers. They're reading for 100% comprehension. Fluent readers. Now, seldom have ever used a dictionary. I was almost going to get rid of that, but I thought, well, I'll keep it up. But I don't know. Using a dictionary slows us down. Fluent readers generally just keep on reading. They skip words. They don't help. Generally. Okay. Now. Fluency. Research is so clear. Fluent readers are better readers than slow readers. Isn't that interesting? Slow reading is poor reading. Slow reading is poor reading. Now, we know again from research, if we are able to increase our students' rate in English, WPMs, how many words per minute they read. If we are able to do that, that will increase fluency. And when we increase fluency, what happens? It increases comprehension. Let me, let me go over that one more time, because it's a bit unusual, maybe. Fluency. You know what fluent? You know what this is? Fluent readers. Now. If we can raise WPMs in English, words per minute, that's going to impact fluency. Fluency impacts comprehension. Slow reading is poor reading. Word for word reading is terrible reading. Fluent readers are better readers than slow readers. The research is clear. Now, by better readers, the research means this. They get better scores on comprehension tests. That's what better reading readers means in this context. The research is very clear. Students who take a long time to read a passage and answer comprehension questions don't do as well as students who read faster and answer comprehension questions. Slow reading is poor reading. Okay, now, this is so clear. Rate builds fluency. Slow readers cannot be fluent readers. Okay, now, I'm borrowing an idea from my, from my colleague Mark Helgeson, who will be here. Uh, I've changed it a bit, but the next couple of slides are courtesy of, are, are, are inspired by Mark's work. I'm going to give you some slides. Now, what I want to do is, is, is demonstrate this. So put down your pencils or pens or your computers, and I'm going to give you a sentence to read. That's all you got to do. Again, this is not a test. There's no comprehension question. Just see what is your reaction to reading this sentence.
excitement can be pleasurable if they're going through this painful process. Because by the time when they do word for word reading, slow reading, they forgot the beginning of the sentence. They gotta go back and read it again. Because you don't know the meaning of each word. So you gotta stop, figure it out, okay, go to the next word, go. But remember, reading is this interactive process where we use our knowledges to interact to create meaning. And if we get to the end of the sentence and we haven't we don't understand the way it goes together, then we forget the whole paragraph. How about the previous paragraph? Etc. So it's a very tricky business. So this is why the researchers say fluency, fluency, fluency. We need fluency. Fluent readers are better readers than slow readers. Rate is a critical part of fluency. It's not the only thing, but it's what I really want to talk about today. Fluency and comprehension are closely linked. Okay. Are you thinking about this? Hmm. Now what thought is in your mind now? Exactly. Give me five. I did, I did, this is not a planted question, right? I'm serious. But this is what I want to see. All right, all right, maybe, maybe fluency is important. Okay, but so what? What can we do about it? Ah, you know already, don't you? Right? Right? <laughs> Mm. Extensive reading, fluency, research, pretty clear on this. Primary. There are other ways. I'm not going to talk about them. I'll tell you very briefly. Um, uh, we know from some research that if we teach our students fluency reading strategies, that helps increase fluency. Fluency strategies, not comprehension strategies. Generally, when we talk about reading strategies, we're really talking about comprehension strategies. But there are fluency strategies we can teach our students. There are also activities that we can do that build up fluency. Activities that we can do with our students. However, what I want to do is focus today on this notion of extensive reading with fluent reading. Now, my point of view on this is that it's resting on the site vocabulary. This fluency is this nature of extensive reading and becoming fluent rests on this whole idea of sight vocabulary. Now, very quickly, I'm going to go back to this and come back to this again. There's only, really only one way to get sight vocabulary, and that's by seeing the words over and over and over again in different contexts over and over and over again in different contexts. That's where extensive reading comes in. Because as we heard from Akio's presentation just a little while ago, when you're reading millions of words, think of how many times they're seeing these words over and over and over again in different contexts. Sight vocabulary. Now, as we know, everybody in extensive reading, everyone should know this very quickly, a lot of easy, interesting books that students select themselves. I'm going to be talking a little bit more about this tomorrow uh, after, no, Monday afternoon, uh, Monday morning, 10 o'clock. Yes. Okay. Now, when we are engaging in extensive reading, students are not reading for 100% understanding. They don't have to pass tests on it unless they're doing the Moodle stuff, but that's a slightly different story. Now, because of this, reading rate is generally faster than when they are doing intensive reading. Generally, the rate is faster. And you know what increased rate does leads to increased fluency. Fluency or leads to comprehension. Okay, it makes sense here. Now, 
generally, 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 <laughs> generally, okay? They may do extensive reading activities. Some purists with ER totally disagree with activities, uh, but that's another story. I won't go there right now. Okay, now let's take a look at this. This is particularly important, I've discovered. I'm going to talk a little bit more about this tomorrow, but right now I want to go over this. The teachers are role models. They read and they read and they read, and then they may select and conduct extensive reading activities. However, they monitor their students' reading. All the stuff we know we've done, this is all familiar to you for extensive reading. Okay, now, very, very quickly, we know that these two happen. We learn to read by what? Reading. There's no other way. There's no other way. Reading is learned behavior. We are not, we don't have it in our genetic code yet. Okay? <laughs> Listening and speaking languages when we're young, or languages around us, yes. Humans, all things being equal, will learn any language or languages around it. We don't do it. We've got to learn reading and writing. It's got to be work with us. It's like any skill. If you want to be a piano player, what should you do? Play the piano. If you want to be a tennis player, a swimmer, a good cook, you've got to do these activities in order to do it. And that's why extensive reading is so good for learning to read, is because the students are doing the one thing, the one thing that they need to do in order to become a reader, and that's reading. Okay? Where did that, how did that go? Okay. We know we get vocabulary. Now, this should be a no-brainer in uh, extensive reading. The interesting thing is, Rob, you can help me on this if I'm wrong. My reading of the research is, for extensive reading, is that it, sh it shows clearly that students who do a lot of extensive reading learn new meanings of new words. Do, has the research shown that we learn new meanings of old words? I'm not sure, but not it wouldn't make, would, wouldn't, I don't think so. wouldn't would totally make sense to me. Yeah, but it's my experience as an expensive reading teacher that my students not only learn new words, but they learn new meanings of old yeah. words. And I've been trying to encourage some of my doctoral students to do that for their dissertations, but mm -hmm. it's hard. How do you measure new meanings of old mm -hmm. words? But yeah. there, there is evidence of picking up uh, idiom collocation. Yes, exactly, exactly. So that's seen using new words in different contexts. Yes. So it makes sense that they would pick up new meanings of old words. Sure. Yeah. But Bill's going to say, but we don't have the research on that, right, Bill? <laughs> okay. We've been. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. Good. This is follows the talk we were having earlier about extensive reading. Okay. Now, uh, at its oh, I want to say one more thing about vocab. Think about your first language cultures. Think about your first language cultures. Educated people probably read a lot, and they have larger vocabularies than people who are not. So it shouldn't be any different from extensive reading. Our students who read a lot should probably have bigger vocabularies than students who don't read. OK. Now, the affective side, increased attitude, increased motivation, we know that already. And then we get the listening and speaking ability increases. Now, this is cool because you wondered, how does reading work that way? Well, it does, not sure. Now, writing, and writing is good. And as we just heard about, uh, as we just heard two presentations ago, grammar, 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 really is nice. Now, one more word about writing. Generally, and I know it's true, my friends in, in Japan and Korea and China have told me this, and I know it's true in America, good writers generally are what? Readers, exactly. So. If our students read, why? It's not surprising their writing's going to improve. Yeah. Okay, so this stuff is, everybody should know this stuff pretty 